I am a school climate specialist with the Oklahoma State Department of Education. Our team works under a school climate transformation federal grant. Most of the time, we go out in schools um, assisting them with implementing positive behavior systems and interventions and also doing a lot of trauma-informed work. Uh, right now, as we all find ourselves in this uncharted territory, um, trying to make sense of a new normal, um, our focus has really shifted more to making resources that are accessible and easy to use for educators, but also for parents, guardians, anyone that finds themselves in a situation um, you know, needing some assistance as parents are stepping into that educator role, as teachers are shifting into this distance learning platform. So our team has created several documents, but one of those is the Family Guide to Positive Behavior Supports. So when I say positive behavior supports, we're talking about a framework. We're talking about putting in place you know, a, a daily routine, a daily schedule, um, setting expectations, and being very consistent with our implementation with our own children. And then educators, you're more than welcome to take these resources and share them out um, with your parents if they're asking for resources. Um, or you, know, you just feel like it would be useful for some of your students to implement something like this at home. So what we're doing is we're going to create these consistent behavior expectations, develop procedures and routines to teach students how to behave and set them up for success. When we focus on these positive behaviors, we're creating environments of connection and cooperation. In this document, you will find information on how to create these positive behavior expectations this middle column tells you what this provides, and then over here on the right side, you will find links. Some of these lead to editable documents where you can create um, you know, your own products for your own home setting. Um, and then some of these are links to websites that have resources that are useful. We're gonna talk next about teaching the expected behaviors, creating routines, using positive feedback, and giving logical consequences. So this first resource I want to show you is the framework itself that we have built um, into the guide for families and educators to use. This is an example of a behavior or a learning matrix. You'll notice at the top it says we are cooperative, kind, and responsible learners at home. So that's kind of the little motto or mantra that we have created to go along with this. You see the cooperative, kind, and responsible at the top as well and how it fits with that motto or that mantra. Um, these are our main expectations that we would be setting for our children. Um, when you download this document, you are welcome to put in any three to five examples that you would like, but these are already in here, so feel free to use this and make this fit um, to your family setting. So this is actually an example that I am using with my own three children, my husband and I are both still working full time, so we needed to set up some very consistent expectations and boundaries for our three boys to continue um, to be engaged in their schoolwork so that mom and dad can continue to work as well. So this is what works well for us, but like I said, feel free to take this, download it, make it fit for your family. I said three to five expectations, I would not choose more than five because then it's going to get to be way too much to keep up with. Um, three keeps it pretty simple. So you'll see over here down the left side column, these match up with the daily schedule that are also in this document. So here's the daily schedule. So before 9 a.m. we have get ready time, we have community time, we have a work time, we have kind of a check-in break, creative play time, chore time, lunch, quiet reading, outside movement, um, check-in, break, mindfulness time, work time number two, a check-in reflection, and then most of the evening we are having family time. My kids are getting a lot of free time, lots of outside play time. And then at 8 o'clock is get ready for bed. 8.30 is our bedtime, but you'll see one of the expectations that I have set down here at the bottom says that you can get a 9.30 bedtime if you followed the schedule throughout the day, you had limited complaining, overall did a pretty great job, and you had limited fighting with your brother. So um, some days my kids get the 9.30 bedtime, some days they don't, but they learn from that. Um, but this matches up to this matrix. All of these pieces work together. 
So in this get ready time, which on our schedule was before 9 a.m., the child would wake up on time, their bedroom needs to be picked up, um, you know, maybe bed made, whatever that expectation looks like for at, at your home. And they keep a positive tone. They say please and thank you. They take a shower bath, brush teeth, hair, eat breakfast. And then from 9 to 9.30 is that community time. This is where we're preparing for our day. So they tell us their needs for the day. You know, we try to stay positive and respectful. Everyone gets to share their thoughts and needs and opinions, whether those are positive or negative. Any, we try to get our whining out of our system here. And then it says complete your check-in time worksheet with mom and dad. So that is another resource that is in the same packet. This is the check-in sheet that we have created for use. Again, you are welcome to modify this and change it to fit for your family. So on the check-in sheet, you'll see that every day we are reviewing that schedule and every day we are going over the home learning matrix. So this is the matrix, this is the schedule. When you are trying to put in place a positive behavior support system, the biggest key to having success here is just staying consistent and constantly reminding them of what your expectations are for them for that day. You know, we sometimes as educators assume that, well, you know, I told them to stop talking. I told them to get in line. I've said it 10 times. So we assume that it's sinking in and they're going to do it. But oftentimes we still have those friends that continue to talk or continue to be out of the line when we're walking down the hallway. So you, know, you constantly have to be setting them up for success and helping them um, learn these expectations so that they know what is expected of them. It makes everybody's day run a little bit smoother, but the main key is to, to stick with it and be as consistent as possible. So back to the check-in sheet. Um, each day, the child would put their top three things they want to accomplish today. You know, so whether that's schoolwork, whether that is an art project at creative time, um, whether that is a virtual tour of a museum that they want to check out. They're putting the top three things right here that they want to accomplish today. And then you'll see that on this check-in sheet, we have these two work time tasks. It says list out assignments to be completed and identify if technology is needed, if help is needed from someone at home or a teacher, if quiet time is needed so you can focus, and what if any supplies are needed to complete the task. So typically during this first morning time, my kids are putting in the activity they're working on. Um, one of mine has been working on seesaw activities from his teacher. The other has been doing an online weather and climate web quest. So if they need tech, which both of them went for that act, those activities, they would mark the tech box. You know, if they need assistance from me or from dad, they can mark the box. You know, if they need very quiet time, they don't need sibling walking in and interrupting them, they can mark that box. If they need an extra supply that's not listed there, they would write it out. Any other information goes into the other box. And then we would move on to the afternoon work time. On our schedule, we have a couple of different check-in break times. Every time that we hit a check-in break time, we go back to this paper, we pull it out, we reflect on what they did. If they finish the activity, we work mark done for today, good job. One of the biggest keys to also having success with this, besides being extremely consistent, is lots and lots of positive feedback. So we have that listed on this document as well on um, using positive statements. And we have listed in another resource here that give examples of that. So these are tips for implementing positive behavior supports at home. So instead of saying, you know, be quiet, stop crying or whining, we can say, okay, I can see this is hard for you. Please use your words. And it is a little bit of a mind shift. Um, you know, when we're all trying to work at home and you become frustrated, your kids are arguing with each other, it's so easy to be like, okay, stop. I said be quiet. You know, instead try to reframe your words into a positive manner, saying something like, can you please use a softer voice? It's important that we try to keep the conversation positive. You know, keep a calm tone, even if you start to feel yourself getting a little bit triggered and upset, know your own triggers and when to step away from the moment. Try to always listen with empathy. You know, when you're conversing with your child, bend down to their level and make eye contact. 
Um, try to understand your child's perspective and validate their feelings, no matter how trivial it may feel to us. You know, your child may get upset over something very small that it happened with a sibling, but it's very important to them in that moment. So it's important that we validate and help the child feel the emotions that they are sensing in their body at that time, respond with understanding and empathy, and then try to guide the child back to an activity. When your child feels validated, they are more likely to hear and listen to you, change the behavior that you're experiencing. You're helping build that, make that connection, build that relationship between you and your child. You're helping to build your child's self-esteem and self-awareness, and we're overall improving your child's emotional health. So when you're at those check-in times, when you see your kids doing anything great, Give them all of that direct positive feedback. You know, thank you so much for sitting and working on your web quest today. It really was great for you to sit and work quietly. And I was able to sit on my Zoom meeting for an hour and I, I appreciate it so much. You know, let's go outside for a few minutes. Something like that. And giving them that break time, during that 15 minute break time, my kids are going outside. My kids get to turn on the TV for a few minutes. They get to play a game for a few minutes. They they just get that 15 to 20 minute break um, that they need. I mean, as educators, we oftentimes throughout the day are providing brain breaks in our classrooms anyways. So that's what I'm trying to do for my children at home. I know that just like we as adults oftentimes need to step back and reset, our kids need that so much more. So that's what we do during the, the check-in reflection time. And then at the end of the day, from 3 to 3.30 where it says reflection, they're filling out this part at the bottom that says reflection, you know, asking our kids what went well today, what didn't go as well as you had hoped, what do you need for tomorrow to be successful, did you complete the three priorities that you listed earlier in the morning, and what is something you need to know. So we're just reflecting on and um, we're trying to set them up for success as best we can and again trying to be extremely consistent with all of this. That's, that's the main key here. It looks the same, but it is completely blank. You can go in and personalize it however you want. If that is something that you would so choose to do. Personally, I think it would be easiest to take the ones that we have already created and filled in and just modify them to fit for your family and your kids. We have linked in a parent pointers video that discusses the benefits of using positive feedback with your children. And then we want to end with talking about using logical consequences, relating the consequence to the behavior. So this links you to an article on here, helping kids learn from their mistakes. If you have any questions um, over the webinar, over any of the resources that we have linked in for you, please feel free to contact myself um, if you would like to get in contact with any of the other climate specialists around the state. I am over kind of the Oklahoma City metro area on the entire western side of the state. Uh, we have Heather Graham, who's over southern and southeastern Oklahoma. We have Jenna Jones, who is over the far eastern side of the state. And then Mandy Sellers, that is over the northeastern part of the state. So if you would like contact information for the school climate specialist of your region, here's my email. Shoot me a message. I will be more than happy to send that information to you. Have a great day. Thank you.